y'all and welcome back to another video of my creative life with Kelsey where we read books we make art and essentially do whatever our creative hearts desire today we are going to be talking about women-owned bookstores specifically in the LA area since that is where I am but I actually looked at a couple of bookstores bought some great books as well as did some research about surrounding bookstores in my area since it is women's history month and here on this channel we talk about books so why wouldn't we want to buy from women who are selling books <laughs> so stick around to learn more about what i found a little haul at the end as well as some more bookstores within my area that i didn't get a chance to check out before I checked out two bookstores that were further out weren't necessarily in my area one in Pasadena that was a black woman owned bookstore as well as one of the older bookstores that are in the LA area which was really dope I wanted to check out one more but they closed a little bit early and that's okay <laughs> I will just have to have a chance to buy books from them once again. You may be asking, Kelsey, why do you want to check out all these bookstores that are owned by women? And that's a strange question, in my opinion. <laughs> I think, one, I am definitely somebody who is guilty of just going to their local barns because of the fact that, honestly, just a sex, a sex, a sex, a uh, assess, a sex accessibility accessibility jeez okay she reads books <laughs> accessibility uh there's a barnes right next to my grocery store my trader joe's that i buy from weekly and it's very easy just to be like oh let me walk in there and buy these books that i've been wanting to buy i know that they will probably more than likely have it i am guilty of that i am sure that all of y'all are too because it's just it's easy there are like five million of them around here I prefer walking into a bookstore rather than ordering books because I get high off of the the smell of the books and the coffee and the environment of being surrounded by books. That is why, personally, I don't order my books online. There's just no fun in that for me. Honestly, like, buying from small bookstores is really important. Not just it feeds the economy, but also the fact that, like, you know, these books are specifically, like, picked and everything they aren't just like oh let's put them in the store because people are buying them but uh, more so there's kind of more of a heart behind it and as somebody who in the future maybe one day would love to own her own bookstore <laughs> uh, I really wanted to have that experience and I think the one thing that I loved going into all of these bookstores is that each one had its own vibe and it just felt like more of an adventure I know the experience was just better it didn't feel like oh I'm here to buy a book and everything and there's tons of books here by the way Barnes does not always have your book I think there have been a couple of times now that I have struck out going to Barnes so that's a myth that's absolutely a myth that Barnes is going to have your book every time and I just don't want to look around or whatever that's absolutely a myth it's also a myth that bookstores like smaller bookstores mark up their prices um I went to all these bookstores and there were no markups. I don't know where that myth started, but we need to, that needs to go away. Honestly, honestly, it was really great going into all these bookstores and seeing the vibe of each. And I would love to show you guys what we, what we found and what these bookstores look like. So let's get into that. I checked out two. Okay, let's move on to that.
so we had such a great time going to all these bookstores i would love to show you some of the books that i got as well as give you some more recommendations if you live in the la area of women-owned bookstores that you should check out i have my list here so i don't forget any and i'm these are the cliff notes of, of what is around in our area one is reparations club i know i feel like they've gotten a lot of notoriety as of late and i love that because honestly the story is an experience uh they have amazing experiences and events there as well as just a lot of great stuff aside from books in the store but it is black woman owned and it is just so much fun it's such a it's a smaller bookstore but they have tons and tons and tons of books in, in that store. And honestly, you don't really want to leave. It's really just set up real cute. They have like a reading corner situation. And I've always had a great time every time I've gone in to buy a book. So Reparations Club is one of those. Uh, another one is Stories, Books, and Cafe. This is an older uh Ca like bookstore um they have an actual cafe to work out of in their bookstore which is fantastic we w we love that um as well as they specialize in um also reselling used books so check out stories books and cafe uh another one is the ripped bodice which i was supposed to go to in these the film the other day and everything we didn't get to go unfortunately. Uh, they are queer woman owned, which is dope, and they always are putting new displays up in their bookstore. It's really fun, but they specialize in romance novels. That was one of the reasons why it wasn't first in my list, because y'all know that I am a speculative fiction, horror, thriller, girly, and I'm not much for romance novels. So while I wanted to give some shine to them, I also, they weren't at the top of my list. I just love reading romance. I recommend you go to the Rip Bodice. They have, they look amazing. I have not gone yet, but I really do plan to in the future when I maybe want to get into my romance bag for just a quick second. I don't know, I can't be there for too long. Really, they just change out their displays and everything. It just looks like so much fun in there. So check them out. Another one that I wanted to visit, but unfortunately they were closed on Sundays and um, I wasn't able to check them out during the week, was the Salt Eaters Book Club on Queen Street here in LA. They are really dope. They have a lot of events. Um, their rent parties are really dope and got them a lot of notoriety last year. And they usually have a great setup within the store. So check them out if you're looking for any a black woman owned bookstore to support here in the LA area. And last is Tia Chuchas, which is an amazing center, cultural center here in LA. They are a book, uh, woman-owned bookstore, but a Latina-owned bookstore, which unfortunately, I think that they were the only ones that I could find that was Latina-owned. So make sure you go and support them and check them out. They have an amazing bookstore that is really just a vibe and wonderful. And yeah, we need more like Latina-owned bookstores in the LA area, which that's just wild to me considering like our population because I'm still surprised that that's really all I can find in my research if you have any recommendations down below and you live in the LA area please share them but also if you don't live in LA share also what like women-owned bookstores you know about in your area somebody may come across the comments and go check them out so the support is fantastic now let's get into my little small book haul from buying from these bookstores. Okay, first, I visited Octavia's bookshelf and I had a great time. I really, really loved it. Octavia Butler is one of my favorites. You could tell from walking in the store what their focus was and why they even named it um, Octavia's bookshelf and everything. There was a lot of um, speculative fiction, especially by black authors, and, and I love that. I absolutely love that. Fantasy and sci-fi, they definitely showed that they had a priority on their shelves, but I also love that they had a very comprehensive children's section and a children's corner. So I loved that it felt like Honestly, if you have kids and you live in the Pasadena area or close to it, I recommend that you go check them out because I felt like they really catered to like trying to have 
more children reading and everything. They had a ton of books I had never seen. Um, there was one and I wanted to buy it really bad, but I was just like, I have... I've not bought any children's book in a while, but I'm also like, mm, let me let me hold off. But it was really dope. It was um, a children's book about a young girl who's like learning to thrift and everything. And I was like, oh my god, I love that. As somebody who's a thrifter, I absolutely love that. So go check them out. But while I was in the store, what I bought while I was in the store was Night of the Living Queers, edited by Shelley Page and Alex. Brown. This is an anthology, a horror anthology um, by queer authors. And I, as y'all have learned, I usually reserve my monthly sprints for anthologies because one, I love, I found this new love for anthologies because it's like a great way to try and like stack up on finding new authors and everything. So like I recently read The Black Girl Survives in this one and I found a bunch of new authors that I'm now really excited for um, and now have like checked out like, okay, what have they put out before? What are they coming out with next and everything to put on my radar because of kind of knocking out one book, you can find like 12 to 13 new authors. And I really, really love that as somebody who reads so much and is constantly looking for more diversity on my shelves, you can kind of knock that out with just like one book. And it's like, okay, great. I've got like five, five to six new authors that I'm really looking for now because I've read their short stories and I absolutely love them. This month I was reading Peach Pit and same situation, which was like all women authors and different stories of unsavory women. So I'm really big into anthologies. And so I'm constantly looking for my anthology of the month to check out. Um, and so I thought this one would be dope because it's a horror, queer horror, um, which is great. I feel like this last month, I've been looking for some like reads, especially in preparation for June, but also just for other like what is it, April? I don't really have much of anything, but I am looking for a, like, bisexual author to read from, um, and a bi bisexual story to read from for the month of April. May being, um, Asian History, Asian, uh, Heritage Month. I want to read from Asian authors all of May, but I don't just want, I want queer authors to be a part of that conversation. So, I, again, checking out anthologies. It's going to help me on that. Um, so I picked this up. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to see what stories we get into. And I've been just having a really great time with anthologies lately. I'm upset that I did not try them out before. Now, the reason also <laughs> that I reserve my anthologies for the sprints, is because more times than not, anthologies don't have narrators or audiobook versions. I'm not sure why. It'd be great to have, you know, a cast of people for an anthology. Um, but yeah, more times than not, that's not the case. So, and considering that I don't have a lot of time to read physically, like I'm currently just now about to finish Peach Pit, and I started that one at the beginning of the month just because I've been too, like, I've just been tired. <laughs> so I haven't been reading it. But um, I'm excited to get into this one. The cover is so cute. You can tell that, like, there's a witch, and there's, like, somebody who's trying to solve a mystery, and this one's a demon of some sort. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to, to take a look at this one. The next book that I got was Peach Pit. I have been reading this this month, and I checked it out from my local library, and honestly, I've had a good time reading this. I don't think it was as good of a time as The Black Girl Survives in this one. Um, some of these stories in here, I've just kind of been, are a little bit much more abstract than The Black Girl Survives in this one, and I don't know. Some of them I'm like, okay, I get it, and some of them I'm like, maybe, maybe I need to read it again? Really, though, I think I really, really, but what really sold me on this was the very first story in the book, and that's Fuckboy Museum by Deja uh, Filial. And also there's a Megan Giddings story in here that I absolutely loved. So that was enough for me to get out, go out and buy my own copy of the book and want it on my shelves. And I got this from Skylight Books, which is one of the older bookstores in the LA area. Me and my partner went to go check it out, and it's, it's in Los Feliz area. And I loved it. It... <laughs> 
it felt like a couple years back me and my partner went to Seattle because we're huge nerds and if you have not if you and your partner are leaving for an anniversary trip or a trip of whatever kind and you are a book nerd or a movie nerd or a pop culture nerd you love coffee or something I recommend a trip to Seattle. We had such an amazing time. We, our itinerary was packed. The food was amazing. I don't know why nobody's talking about how good the food is in Seattle. We had such a good time going to the uh, pop culture museum they had that had an amazing exhibit for us music lovers. We went to a bunch of bookstores for me being the book nerd that I am. We, we just had such an amazing time. And Skylight Books reminded me of walking into one of those bookstores, but being in LA. So I will most definitely be going to Skylight Books again. It's really not that far from me, and they have a very comprehensive book collection. And I love being in there. It was a great experience. And make sure that you don't you check out the Art Annex, which is a little bit down, just slightly down the street from Skylight Books. That is also a part of Skylight Books. They're just uh, a storefront that only sells graphic novels and art books and magazines and everything. It looked amazing in there. In all honesty, I might have bought something if I wasn't with my partner who was trying to hold me back. So make sure you don't miss that while you walk out of Skylight Books. I think that it's very easy to not know that the two are bookstores. Um, but I really had a great time. And yeah, going back to like what I said earlier, I think that some people have this misconception that like small bookstores in order to make a profit are marking up their books from like the reseller price, um, the retail price. I bought all these books for the retail price that's on the book. So I don't know where that miss started, <laughs> but I had a great time and I bought this. So that's it. I had a great time looking at all these different bookstores in my area. I, I just, I really want to go to more in the future. Uh, I have like that whole list and everything. <laughs> and I think the one thing that I noticed though is like LA for how big it is, for how many people are in it. I'm really surprised to see that there were only this many like bookstores, small bookstores, let alone owned by women in the area. You would think there would be more and that's why we need to support small bookstores because I don't I don't know if they're going out of business. I don't know if it's just like not enough or what. Um, but yeah, I just it was such an experience going to each one of these. It didn't feel like, OK, I'm going in to buy a book and I'm coming out. I know that that sounds very much like the you got mail <laughs> message. It was it was so fun to be in each one of these bookstores like you wanted to be in there like it didn't just feel like, oh, I'm picking up a book. And now I've done what I've needed to do and I'm going to get my coffee and leave. Or I'm here to just study and not buy a book and leave. <laughs> so please, I do encourage you to go and check out your own communities, local, small owned bookstores, especially if they're owned by women this month and every month, of course. And yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. But if you like today's video, subscribe and comment down below what small owned bookstores you know about in the LA area or even in your own area. Like I said before, you know, some of y'all may be looking for some choices in your area and it'd be great for us to help each other down below in the comments. I will see you on the next one. What is the next one going to be? Oh, it's going to be my wrap up. God, we're at the end of March. Yeah, so check that out. My wrap up, my TBR video is going to be in my next one. So <laughs> check that on. The, uh, subscribe so you can see what I'm going to be reading next month, I guess. And what I thought about what I read this month. <laughs> All right, y'all. Bye.